Hi guys, so we're doing this picture today. The first thing we're going to do is make up some turquoise for the sky and some purple using our pink and ultramarine for the base of the clouds. We're going to wet the entire background area excluding the house because that is white and the land in front because that is white or lighter. And then we're going to put the colour in and push it all around until we're happy and we have an even wash. So I'm going to go back and forth. And again, when you get close to the house, don't overly worry about it being perfect. You can always touch that up later. I'm going to take some kitchen roll and pad out my clouds. I'm also going to pad out that centre section where there's land and the reflection of the clouds. And then I'm going to come in with a small amount of purple and pad that out a little bit too. So I get that kind of effect of the darkness of the clouds beneath. I'm just reshaping the clouds there because some of the water did come seep back in. And the next thing I am going to do is make up this colour so that I can do that little bit of the land in the background. So what I'm going to do is make up multiple greens. I'm not using the most best colours for greens, which was that pale yellow and the, and the bright turquoise because they're not going to be that vibrant. I'm going to use some of the wrong ones so there's some interference with red. And I'm just going to make up lots of different tones of green. And I'm going to start with the reflection of that land in the background first. Oh, there I am touching up the sky there. Any bits that didn't quite come in perfectly, you just touch it up, pad it out, and just get rid of it into the rest of the picture. So I'm going to wet this entire base bit here, and then I'm going to come in with the colours, but let them fan themselves out to look like a reflection. So because the paper's wet beneath, they kind of spread themselves out. I've started with a pale green at the bottom there, Still a dirty green, but a paler version. And then I've come in with a darker green, and then I'm gonna come in with a really browny green on the top. I also did touch in some yellow into this in a minute and kind of fan it out with some green just because I felt like there wasn't enough different colors. There it goes there, just touch a little bit of yellow in. Put some green on top to fan it out a little bit just to give myself some interest. Then I'm gonna come across and do that tiny little section where it's just a tiny little row of trees in a very, very far distance. So I'm just going to touch them in with some of that green and I might come back into that a bit later. So the next thing I'm going to do now that's dry is come in with that lighter green area where it's just grass. So I'm going to make up a nice light greenish colour using the pale yellow and some of that green I've already made. And I'm going to come in across that whole section with a really pale green but it does come down to a more yellowy colour across the base a yellow ochre colour. So I've got that pale green going across the top and I'll bring that all the way across. But just where it joins, right where it joins at the base, it does kind of go into a sandy yellow colour. So I will just bring in some yellow ochre across that base section in a minute. So I'll bring that green across and some of that yellow ochre whilst it's wet into the kind of base of that. So I'm also going to use this colour for the base of my tree in the background there because that one's quite a far away background tree and it's a lot lighter than the foreground trees. So I'm going to put that base in of that yellow oakery colour just randomly with a, a larger kind of round headed brush. And then whilst it's still wet, I'm going to touch in just a little bit of the darker green, but not all over it. I'm going to have areas where you still have that light base colour showing. So this is already a two tone effect. Then I'm going to bring in that dark area. So it's about doing it whilst it's wet. If you use it whilst it's wet and get a couple of colours in whilst it's wet, what you'll find is then you have a nice splay effect in that, that layer and then you can work on top of it at different points and it'll look different. So now I'm going to use that same colour to start myself off on the background trees. So I'm using that kind of mid-tone green and getting that base colour in. Now you do have to work fairly quickly so that the, the, it's still wet for you to touch other colours into. But I'm just going to push the colour across right here. And I think the making sure that the colour is quite 
runny at this point so that you do have some time to play around with it. If you do it fairly dry, you're gonna have a very small amount of time and it won't splay like this is doing now. You can see how that darker color is splaying into the lighter color. And on that picture, it's definitely a lot darker across the base of those trees. But I can't, you can always come in with this as a second layer in a minute. It's just nice to have that two-tone effect straight off the cuff. And you can see coming into that right section there, the, the paint has dried a lot quicker than on the left hand side. I had a lot more time to work with it because I did the left hand side first and that right hand side is a lot drier so it's not splaying so much but you can just use that to your advantage and play around with it. So I'm kind of shaping it out, giving myself some little tiny trees on the top there. And I will come back into this background and just give it a little bit more when it's actually fully dry. So now that tree on the right hand side should be a little bit more dry, it's probably not totally dry but it's definitely a little bit further on. I can actually go into that in a minute and work a bit more on that and it will be a different effect because it's slightly more dry now but it's not perfectly dry. So if I start touching in some colour into that you can see it will splay but not to the same level. It will kind of have a little bit of movement but it won't change the colour like a lot of it did before. So I'm going to start putting little tiny dabs all over that to kind of give myself the idea of where the shadows are on that background tree. The best way of doing this is to potentially move your picture further away from you so that instead of seeing the detail you are literally just seeing shadows and lights and that will help you get where you need to put the dark in. Right, and at this point I just use some turquoise and stroke across the water and then I use some water over the top of those turquoise strokes to soften them out a bit just to give myself that effect of water. Because there was, it was kind of still the water but it did have a little bit of movement in it so I did just want to emphasise that by putting a little bit of kind of lines across and breaking up those reflections of clouds. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to start looking at the, the building and we're going to get that base colour in entirely over that building there. Now because the windows aren't lighter than the background wall we can actually just work over the entire thing. If you had slightly lighter windows you might want to um, block them out with some uh, some masking fluid and what I wanted to do here was just give myself a few different colors so I used different kind of yellow ochres pinks mixed in with different versions of pale gray which I made up with the black and the brown and I was kind of popping them at one way so uh, or another so with the uh, earth there I think that was brown mixed with yellow ochre and pink to make that kind of sandy earth color and then the building was a kind of blue and brown mixed together but, but popped a little bit towards the brownie kind of colour. And then I think I made that yellow ochre colour a little bit more pink for that kind of top of that wall. What I want to show you is that there are very slight differences in lots of different colours. You can pop out and make your picture a lot more interesting. Uh, I added a lot more of that kind of bluey colour to make that concrete colour. So it was much more of a base of blue and brown mixed together. And you can see how lots of different variations of colour will give you that nice base going on. Um, I'm coming back into these trees now. It's all dry. And give myself those um, shadows in the background. So just making up a really nice turquoise and brown I think I used there. Just to give myself those little shadows in the distance. You don't need an awful lot going on in the distance because obviously it's so far away. But it's nice to get some sort of kind of definition, just an idea of trees, shadows and stuff to break them up.
Right, so now I'm making the roof colour, which I'm making a very purpley brown. So I've got the brown and the blue and the pink, and I'm mixing them all together to make that kind of purpley, purpley roof colour that you see there. And I'm going to sweep it across that roof. I'm using the straight edge brush, because obviously that helps me get the straightest edge. And what I'm going to do is sweep that colour across, and then I'm going to use a dry brush. I'm going to dry the brush off. In a minute and I'm going to just sweep it off that top half a little bit more so I've dried it off there and I'm going to just sweep it off a little bit in some strikes to give myself a little bit of a kind of lighter top going down to a deeper bottom and I'm giving myself that back edge of that roof as well And remember, this is just your first layer, so you can give yourself as much interest or whatever as you want going on. Or you can just do it in separate layers. I was just adding some other colours and striking them through to give myself that kind of weird effect that I could see on the roof there. And then I was using that same colour as the base to the windows and door. I have lightly drawn in kind of where they are about, but obviously I'm going to come in with a darker colour and shape them out a bit. So you can play around with this bit. As you can notice, I haven't put the chimney on yet. I swept the sky fully across the chimney because the chimney is quite dark in comparison to that roof. So I knew that it didn't really matter if the blue was underneath it. But obviously I am going to bring the chimney in in a little bit. So now all I'm doing is bringing in that shadowy colour around the base of the wall. Uh, I know it's a little bit further down, unfortunately, I didn't realise how far up the camera was at this point. But I've bought that shadowy, which I've made up with the blue and the brown mixed together, that shadowy grey colour, and I'm just bringing in those shadows over the path. And I'm bringing in that darker, deeper colour on the top of that shadow because the shadow definitely kind of fans out to a lighter grey but has a darker bit right at the very top of the wall. So I'm just touching that in just to give myself that nice splay again. Okay, so that's all dry and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in a deeper colour the roof and I'm going to give myself that first of all I'm making that yellow oak colour and I'm giving myself that kind of back bit of the chimney the bit that's more in the light and then I'm going to sweep some colour across the roof as well I think and touch up a bit of that roof so I think I padded it off because I feel like it was a little bit vibrant and I just want it to be a bit deeper now I'm going to bring in that shadow but also sweep some of that colour across and give myself some little lines on the roof because I've already made some sort of lines but just using the smaller brush to tidy it up a bit. So I'm giving myself where the um, guttering is on the edge of the roof there, just a dark pop on the edge of the roof. And then I'm going to come down with that same dark colour and I'm going to use it in the windows to separate the windows out. But I'm also going to kind of glaze over the windows afterwards with a little bit of colour because I feel like when I do this they're a little bit too perfect, if you know what I mean. I don't really like how they turned out. I ended up glazing over them a little bit and, and kind of getting rid of some of this pattern that I put on because I feel it's a bit too harsh. So I'm just drawing on the lines of the panes of glass that I can see. So I'm giving myself my windowsills there. 
And I do find that doing any kind of straight lines is probably one of the hardest things to do in watercolour. Trying to get those fiddly little straight lines is never an easy task. So with this one I added some water, I put the colour in and then I used some water to wash it out. So that's just plain water there and pushing that darker colour into the background because I can see that it's slightly darker on the left hand side of that door. So I'm now using that same dark colour to give myself some bit more detail. There's some kind of like lines across where that wall is and there's definitely some kind of little weird jiggly tops of the brickwork where it's kind of random and indented. So I'm putting that in there and emphasising that shadow a little bit more. I'm giving myself my window panes going across. And just a few lines to give myself a little bit more interest on the roof there and of course the guttering coming down now you don't have to put all these elements in like the guttering and the fences and stuff like that I mean I think the guttering and fences and all of those parts of it are really very tricky to get in they're a little bit more advanced uh, but I've put them in anyway just to give you an idea of how they go in but if you wanted to leave those elements out obviously you just have to make sure you leave all the elements of it out say if you don't put the fence in and you just put a wall in then you shouldn't really put the shadow of the fence in obviously um, I've used that colour really reduced down to a really pale grey to give myself that kind of highlight shadow on the wall which will go underneath the fence when it's in But it's your painting, you get to put what you want in there, so if you don't want all of those elements in, you don't have to put them in. So I'm making up a really, really palish green up here now. And again, always kind of doing quite a few colours. And I'm going to put in these kind of flowers that are growing to the left hand side of the wall, which will cover up that part that has no colour in it at the moment. So I'm putting the kind of shape of the flower bed and then I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm actually going to use the liquid that I put in here so this is why I'm putting a lot of colour in here and I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to like flick up where the stalks are coming out now I'm using the small but I'm not using any colour I'm just using the colour from the bushes to flick up the stalks going across the water and then it's always good to kind of swap back and forth with your brushes you know if you need the small one and the big one just change it about when you need to and I'm going to start building in the garden now this whole area right near the house the garden going onto the house is quite tricky to see what's what there I mean I can see elements of bits of fence and bits of wall and bits of garden so really I just kind of played around with it until I was happy with it if you can't always see what you're looking at then just kind of do the best with what you can you know just make it up a little bit it's okay to kind of have a little bit of artistic license so I kind of built the bushes up a little bit around that area just because I couldn't really tell what was there and I'm bringing in because there's like dry earth which is that kind of sandy colour and then there's these weird little bits of grass that are just sprouting out a bit so I'm bringing some of that in and I really like how light green kind of the lawn is there because obviously that whole bushy bit to the right hand side is so dark and when we bring that in it's going to be so deep and dark over the top that I really do want these colours to be really light in comparison. Now I'm just literally bringing in any places I can see really light green. I'm going to bring in some of that light green and again we're going to fix all that kind of bit near the house so don't worry about that but obviously if you see any light just bang it in. And now I'm going to give myself the undercolour for my whole bushes that are coming around. So I'm actually going to start kind of building up all the different greens. And do use your round head brush. I mean, that's what it's there for. It's got that shape, that shape of leaves. So when you're getting towards the edges, 
fan it out with the uh, with the round head brush so you get those kind of leafy shapes going on so this is just my under color I'm putting in so really I'm not overly worried about whether it's light or dark I'm just kind of bunging them in I'm trying to put in light where I can see it but at the same time the other greens that I'm putting in I'm just trying to fill in the color so I'm just bunging in a load of color wetting it out so that it all just kind of splays into each other give myself a nice base to start putting on that deep because it's so dark over there I definitely don't want any white coming through so I definitely need to kind of saturate the whole paper with a load of green underneath so that if there is any places where I don't paint that I will not get white paper because that will look awful so this is a really important step of getting that base colour in and the more colour you can get into this base the better I say as you see as you're going along and you're mixing up new colours don't forget about your other little bits like your lawn and the other bits that you can add some of those colours, those interesting colours that you're making as you're going along into. I mean that's the beauty with watercolour is just adding extra stuff. When you make a nice pretty colour add it somewhere else. Right so now I decided to bring some dark brownie black over those windows just to neutralise them out a bit because I felt they were a little too like pen drawing if you know what I mean for this picture I didn't particularly like how bright and zingy they were so I just thought I'd deepen them out a little bit and I think I could see an element of a fence there so I put a little bit of that in and thought I can just go over it a bit with bushes later so now I'm making the brownie orange of the fence that goes around the house and I'm going to put that in So do turn the page to be convenient for you and also do as much as you want with it, don't feel like you have to spend hours on it, you know you can be as loose or as neat as you like with it. So I'm definitely bringing in a lot of darker tones over the top of those windows to give it a little bit more depth and I'm putting in those little lights that I can see. And giving myself a bit more depth to the roof. I just felt like the house really looked quite strange in comparison to how much the greenery was building up. And in comparison I felt like it needed to be darkened out a little bit so I was just doing little elements of that. Now I'm going to try and separate kind of bits of the grass out. I mean that whole base area where we have the kind of light brown of the, the floor and then the concrete and then the steps right at the front. We've got to make sure they're all separated out so that they actually look like what they're supposed to look like. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to sort out where the land touches the concrete and where the steps come in at the front. So making up interesting colours with the greys which I've made out of blue and black. I think right now I'm making a, just a base grey to start those steps up. You can see I've put where that first step is and I'm going to wash it out with some water and then I'm going to put that second step in there again using the, the straight edge of my flat end brush of course because that just makes life easier. So you can now see I've separated that piece of ground, that first bit of step and then now this is the second step. So there's the step coming in, that's the shadow of the step. And I also brought some of this darker grey in again to this house because I felt the house was really light and I'm going to bring that across the whole front of it there. The only part of the house which is completely white is the left hand wall there that I've left completely white.
So now I'm bringing in the rest of that chimney breast. So this is the thing with watercolours, you know you make colours up. I made this kind of browny orangey colour for that fence and then I used it on the kind of earth down there to give myself that interest in the earth and now I'm using it for the chimney breast. You are allowed to do that, like you know, there is no rules with it. You don't just make up every single colour as you're going. You think that colour would be really good for that or that colour could double in for that bit there and you just keep going with it and playing around with it. The more colour you get in, the better, in a watercolour anyway. Okay, so now I'm making up some new greens. And I'm going to start building in those background leaves coming across. Of course I've got those nice light areas where I've put them and I'm making sure that I leave some of them peeking through. So I'm using a kind of mid green and then a slightly darker green where I've added a bit more brown. And I'm going to use these two together. And I'm just going to start building in those shapes and it's really dark that top right and kind of the whole of the right hand side of those leaves that top right and bottom right bit is really really deep so there is a potential that i'm going to go over this another time again how many layers of watercolor is totally your own personal preference and i'm using again the rounded brush because that's the best leaf shape that i've got and it just helps me kind of make it a lot faster and I'm touching in over dry, I'm touching in whilst it's wet. You get lots of different effects on these leaves. If you kind of have bits that are dry, bits that are wet, you can see I'm changing colour as I go. I'm using some yellows, I'm using some darker greens. Because again, even though I've got one base layer and this is my second layer, I'm probably going to come in with another layer afterwards. So don't get nervous about kind of like doing it to a point where you think yep I'm happy with that and then coming back into it again later so you can start seeing it take shape now you can see what's going on I still haven't got that fence in which I'm going to start putting in but I'm going to put the flowers in first so I'm getting those little pink flowers in that I can see and then I'm going to bring in some green leaves around that And now I'm giving myself some depth in that kind of greenery there, another colour on top of it. And you can see the difference there, you can see that's totally working over it completely dry and it's really quite striking, the difference between the light and the dark. Whereas if you're working on it whilst it's all wet and you touch the other colour in, they kind of mix in together a lot more. So it's whatever you like and whatever kind of effect you want. So again, this whole section where the kind of house met up here was really quite complicated and I couldn't really see what was going on because my picture wasn't perfectly clear so I was kind of ad-libbing that whole section where that wall meets that fence in the background because there's two fences of kind of greeny fence and that orange fence and it was all quite complicated in that bit so I kind of made it up a little bit as I went along so again I'm just bringing in some different colours on top, add in different colours as we go in, all using the big brush just to give myself those leafy shapes. And again don't make your greens too vibrant, make sure that you are using quite natural greens and yellows. A good way to do this is to obviously not have the best green not to make the best green out of the turquoise and yellow to use a bit of kind of the yellow ochre or something that's got a bit of red in it so that it kind of makes the green a little bit brownie in tone so 
So what I'm doing right now is not really focusing that much on the shapes I'm creating until I get round the edges. And then when I'm getting to the edges, I'm definitely making sure that I'm getting those nice kind of pointy leaves going towards the house and around those edges. But then when we're coming in, it kind of all is a bit more loose. Because I'm going to come in with another layer and tidy this bit up anyway. I think the key to getting the trees in is to really make up as many different colours as you can. And as you'll go in, if they all mix together, that's fine. But to try and get a bit of kind of difference. So you can see there I'm making another bit of colour because now I've kind of, as I've been going, mixing all the colours together. And now they've all become very much one colour when I've got down to the bottom of that greenery. And so I want to start again with a fresh lot of colour and start putting that in because I don't want it to all be the same tone. So now I really go in with a big pop of turquoise, I think, or turquoise and brown mixed together across that base area because that is really the darkest bit down there. And what you're wanting to do is just separate them out so that they don't look like one. They kind of have a bit more definition to them. And you want the kind of light and shadow going on. Uh, that's pink I've added in there as well just because you know don't feel like you have to keep it to just the greens. I did put turquoise right at the base, I don't think you can quite see where I put turquoise but I did put turquoise down there and I have put pink in it because why not you know you don't want to make the entire bush pink or turquoise but to have little pops of it is quite pretty so there's no reason why you can't add these little touches of colour in. There you can see the turquoise right at the bottom right. So you can see how messy my palette has got and at some point I am going to have to stop and wash off my palette and then start again because it is all getting a big mess now. But I really do like it when you start getting into it and you start building up trees because trees are all kind of variations of the same kind of tone. Uh, they're all kind of variations of green. You can start mixing different little parts of colour in there and you just make lots of different colours. Oh, I think I've made up the colour of that fence now, that kind of tealy blue, tealy bluey green colour. And again, I wouldn't, uh, if I wasn't going to put this in, I wouldn't put the shadow in, obviously. But I do think that it's maybe quite a tricky thing to put in. Fences are notoriously difficult to kind of work with. And really with this, I kind of kept it quite loose. And just put like the hint of the curls on the top. I didn't really overwork it because it's quite a kind of... Um, complex bit there where it's got all of the different things in so I really just wanted to kind of give myself the hint of it so now I kind of get the loops in the top of it going on as well and really with that I just kind of kind of did like my little circles semicircles So this is the last stage I think and I made my turquoisey yellow ochre green and added a load of brown and this is where I'm really going to pop out that dark top coat of leaves where it's really really heavy but you can see how I'm leaving quite a lot of that underneath colour poking through the lights and darks that I've put in all the different layers you can still see you know that's the whole point of it you don't want to completely cover it every time you put a new layer on completely cover what's underneath otherwise it would be completely pointless doing those layers underneath what you do want is to have kind of interest going on i know it's particularly dark down that bottom right hand corner but you want to have little bits poking through So 
so softening out bits as well. I'm using little bits of that just to define the edges. And you can see there me touching it when I put my finger on it, that's to like soften it out. If I put the colour on and it's a little too deep, it's just the same as using a, uh, a kitchen towel. It's just that it's a bit softer. If you use your finger, it doesn't tap it off completely. So yeah, you can see me patting it out with my fingers there. Right, so now I'm just finishing up that little chimney. And then I think I add a little bit of blue just for the light bulbs under the lights and tap them out with my finger. And we are pretty much done. I hope that helped you get some idea of how to get trees in and how to get reflections in the water. You can see how much lighter that background tree is than these foreground trees and how much more detail in the foreground trees there are. Also, this is really nice to see when you take the tape off if you work really heavy in an area like that, that right hand side. How really striking it is when you have a white border. And that is the finished picture. I hope you enjoyed it guys. Bye.